Welcome to Going the Extra Mile, a podcast brought to you by New Leaf Training and Development. Each edition is sure to lift your spirit and encourage you in today's working world. Enjoy. Lessons from camp. Last week, my wife and I served as counsellors on a camp for children in the foster care system. The collection of over 50 volunteers collaborated like no other team I've ever been part of in the working world. While coming up for air in between teaching, playing, running and encouraging the two incredibly energetic 11 year olds I'd been assigned, I started to formulate four fundamental teamwork principles across the fields of Ojai. Number one, clarity of purpose. The mission behind this camp serves as a glue to bond us all together. Regardless of whether you were serving at the coalface as a counsellor or behind the scenes as a sound technician, everyone knew why we were there. The majority of organisations, however, have little to no clarity of purpose. They meander aimlessly with a mission statement that either means nothing to no one or nebulously sounds good, but isn't actionable. Whereas last week, we all put our best foot forward. Most organizations struggle to engage the hearts and minds of people who actually get paid to do their work. Number two, leaders worth following. The two leaders that led us last week are both people of impeccably high character and high competence. Not only are they good at what they do in their separate roles as camp leaders, but they're also good people to be around. Salt of the earth is a phrase that fits well as I think about Greg and Jeannie. Regrettably, what we often see in the real working world are leaders by name, but not by evidence. Selfishness over selflessness, ego over humility, the love of money driving all sorts of choices to make the proverbial bottom line. Number three, extreme ownership. Even though we each had clearly defined roles at camp, I saw countless examples of people mucking in to get done what needed to be done. Upon reflection, I've concluded that because we had clarity of purpose, number one, and were led by leaders worth following, number two, we all did whatever was asked of us or was right in front of us. Unfortunately, many organisations struggle with employee engagement and the majority of the payroll having a mindset of not my job if asked to do something outside of their job description. I remember a while back conducting coaching with an individual who kept their job description in a stand-up plastic frame on their desk. When I inquired of its purpose, I was abruptly told, if it's not on there, I don't and won't do it. I guess that's one way of seeing the world, albeit a very sad one. Conversely, extreme ownership builds a culture of customer-centered service, where everyone is willing and equipped to roll up their sleeves and jump in to help where necessary. Number four, regular check-ins. Each morning while the kids were on another activity, the two leaders I mentioned above met with us as a group of camp counselors for about half an hour. They reviewed the plan for the day with us and asked our input on what was going well and what could be done better. It was this cadence of communication that I believe was a major contributor to the week's success for our ultimate customer, the kids. I find it astounding that in the technological age in which we're living, most employees cite a lack of clear and concise communication as being a major irritant. With so many meetings, emails and workspace platforms such as Slack, Teams and Zoom, you'd think this rumour would have been silenced. Yet it seems there's a lot of noise and only a distant crackling through the airwaves. So this is how it was in Ohio last week, where I was reminded of four fundamental principles of teamwork, clarity of purpose, leaders worth following, extreme ownership and regular check-ins. I wonder why we make everything so much more complicated than it needs to be when people often follow their own importance around a series of tasks. Maybe we should all go back to camp, metaphorically speaking, each summer to be reminded of lessons we should have learned as kids. I hope you found that short story useful. And if you did, feel free to rate, review, and share this podcast. We'll be back next week with another episode, and we also invite you to check out our other weekly podcast, Take 5, an inspiring interview with a leader worth listening to. Bye for now.